my god. I just sort of paid attention to math. I still think zero should either be positive. We were arguing about math, which is which is very stupid for me to do because I I have forgotten more math than I ever knew. Uh, which is amazing, but if I had paid more attention in math, I would have gotten to it. Um, I got a couple pages of notes for tonight. Uh, first thing, I don't want to forget about this. Um, and a lot of you have written in, you posted on the forums forever. You've said, Keith, we would like to come see the show, but you tape in California, and I live in Montana. And I'm like, well, sorry about the Montana thing, but uh, you're going to get, you're gonna have to you know, get your butt out to California first Thursday of every month to watch the show being taped. Because we tape in California, as God intended TV and movie shows to be done. Uh, but then Canada started giving big things, and now you like to tape a lot of movies in uh, Georgia and Michigan and stuff. And so I've been convinced it's time to take Keith Explains on the road. Uh, and so we're pleased to announce tonight the, the Keith Explains tour of 2012 will be kicking off in February. Uh, we're looking at about 75 locations across America and part of Canada. <laughs> Uh, we're going to ignore the western part of Canada because nothing good ever came from the western part of Canada. But the rest of Canada, we'll get to the rest of Canada. Uh, we're trying to hit at least five or six places in every state. Um, it's going to be fabulous. Uh, I'm particularly looking forward to the groupies. Uh, I'm, told, I'm told groupies are great, and I've, I've had no experience with them so far. Uh, I'm also looking forward to roadies. Uh, I mentioned this before. I would really like for my life to have a roadie because whenever I watch like a concert... The roadie is the guy who, like, the guy will be up there singing, and the roadie will run out and hand him a bottle of water just at the time he knows he's thirsty. And I'm like, I need a guy like that in my life. Like, if I'm sitting in my office thinking, okay, it's possible my thinking would be enhanced by a nice cool glass of water or perhaps a Coke. And if there were a guy who crawled into my office and just put a Coke up on my desk right where my hand was moments before I thought, hey, I need a Coke, that'd be fabulous. <laughs> And if that hand could then kind of like tap the edge of the screen and go, add one, you know, <laughs> that would be the best. That would be the best if the roadie also knew how to write the code. So if you're, if you're a roadie and you're particularly good with multi-threaded C++ code, send in a resume. Uh, anyway, Keith explains to her. Uh, so we, we are soon going to be uh, opening up interviews for the various positions. Um, most important position, of course, is Keith. Uh, I, I don't have time to go on the road, so we're, we're going to be hiring a Keith. Uh, you'll, you'll need to be able to do what I do, which is act like a nitwit on TV, uh, except you'll be on stage. Um, if you could play the guitar, that'd be good, uh, but it's not necessary because I can't play the guitar. Um, uh, after we get the Keith roll nailed down, uh, then uh, role number two, of course, is clipboard guy. Uh, uh, you guys don't see it, but before the show starts, oh, we have this guy with a clipboard that comes out and talks. And I don't know where he got the clipboard, so you're going to need to bring your own clipboard if you're a clipboard guy. Um, and then on the clipboard, he's got this piece of paper with this ever-expanding set of rules. And I don't know where the rules came from, because uh, technically I'm in charge of the show, and I didn't make up those rules. But... So if you're hired as clipboard guy, you'll need to be able to come up with arcane and idiotic rules, uh, and then you'll entertain the audience uh, before the show starts. Uh, uh, Keith explains tour. Uh, we're gonna need like an opening band of some kind. So uh, if you're a band, let me know. Uh, we might want an opening comedian, uh, and I'm thinking like uh, Sinbad class or below. Uh, and not not like 1996 Sinbad because that was he was popular. I'm thinking like now Sinbad class or below. Uh, if you're a comedian, you know where you rank <coughs> roughly with respect to Sinbad. I assume. Uh, just ask if you don't know how you rank. Ask yourself this question: If if you called a comedy club and said, "Hey, I would like to come do a set there Friday at nine," and if moments before you called, Sinbad had also called and said, I'd like to do a set Friday at 9, if they say, oh, we got a guy, but we're going to cancel him, you're better than Sinbad. <laughs> and if they say, sorry, we got a guy at 9, you're not better than Sinbad. That's, that's the Sinbad comedy scale. Um, 
Uh, it works with anyone else, but really Sinbad is the easiest guy to explain it to. Uh, so that's, that's the Keith Explains Tour. Uh, tickets will be available through Ticketmaster. Um, I get roughly $8 for every ticket sold. Ticketmaster gets $76 from every ticket sold. Uh, I tried to drive a better bargain than that, but they said, if we give you a better bargain, Bono will just be back, and he'll want $9. And we can't have that, for God's sakes. Uh, so I'm stuck with $8. Um, if you want one of them, come backstage passes. Uh, that's an extra 10 bucks. Uh, and if you want to be able to eat any of the jelly beans, that's another $10. Uh, backstage is just going to be filled with jelly beans. Because uh, I want to put out a rider that talks about... I, I'm not going to say like no black jelly beans, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put math in it. It's going to be like, there must be twice as many green jelly beans as there are purple jelly beans. Uh, there must be one purple jelly bean for each state in America. The number of orange jelly beans <laughs> subtracted from the number of red jelly beans must be four times the number, right? Well, there's this long, complicated math thing, and then when I get there, if I don't see jelly beans, I'll know that you didn't read the contract at all. Because <laughs> uh, I'm not going to count the jelly beans to see if you got it right. I mean, this isn't like second grade with the math. Uh, Keith explains to her. Uh, you'll be able to buy tickets on the website uh, sometime next year. I hope you could all make it uh, because I'm told it'll be great. <laughs> I don't know who told me that. Uh, I was just waiting for a bus and I came up with the idea of having a tour and the guy next to me said, man, that'd be great. And I said, thank you. And then he turned to the person on the other side of him and said, that would be great. <laughs> so I... I'm not sure if he was actually talking to me or if he just thinks everything is great. Uh, but it's really not much different. Uh, oh, speaking of weird guys at bus stops, uh, this is something someone else asked me to talk about. Bluetooth headsets. Um, it used to be if you saw someone walking down the street talking and there was no one next to them, you knew they were crazy. <laughs> and then they invented the little Bluetooth headset and the cell phones. And then you could plausibly have someone walking down the street talking to someone, but you wouldn't see anyone there. And then you'd be like, are they crazy or not? So then there was a game like, we're going to show you a video of a guy and you have to decide if he's crazy or if he's on a cell phone. And then people were like, man, this is really hard. It's not hard at all. Actual crazy people don't stop talking. Okay? If you're on a cell phone, you have to pause every once in a while for the person at the other end of the cell phone. Unless you're a really high-level executive and just dictating things. So I guess it could be really high-level executive or crazy. That might still work, but regular people on a phone call pause. And then they'll just be like nodding. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Crazy people don't need to stop talking because there's, there's no one they're talking to. They're just... I. Pretty much, I think, if you talk continuously for more than 10 or 12 minutes at a time, you're stark raving crazy. <laughs> if you do it for like 28 and a half minutes, you're completely crazy. If you're just talking for a long time. Um, I think I talked about this last month, but again, once I do a show, it leaves my brain, so uh, the audience will tell me. I want to talk briefly about the Wave Awards. Uh, the Wave Awards are the Western Access Video Excellence Awards, blah, blah, blah. People are like, Keith, why don't you have any Wave Awards? And I'm like, have you watched my show? It's not good. <laughs> and then they're like, really, you should apply. And I'm like, I'm not going to apply. That would just be wasting money to not get Wave Awards. Uh, I, I know some people that did get Wave Awards, and I, I don't think my show is better than their show. Um, it's great, though. My show is great. I want to point that out. That's why we have a tour does anyone else's show have a tour? No, no, it's just mine. My show is just not award-worthy. Uh, it is tour-worthy. Um, anyway, so since I never apply for Wave Awards, I feel I, I'm incredibly free to mock the Wave Award peoples all the time. Uh, now, my friend John also sent in for a Wave Award on a show that I'm on, so it's possible that he didn't get a Wave Award because I was on the show. <laughs> But it's also possible to get a Wave Award because the show isn't good. It's more likely the me part. It's more likely the me part um, because he's got, he had like an otter. He had an otter on his show. He was great. 
I, I briefly thought I was high. <laughs> it's like, I'm having a really bad LSD flashback. And I'm like, wait, I never did LSD. I'm like, how would you know? <laughs> what if when you do LSD, you forget doing LSD? Then you'd be like, I don't remember doing LSD. You must have done it then. Sorry, that's, that's one of them logical things. Uh, someone wrote in and said, Keith, will you please talk about eggplant? <laughs> I was like, really? Why? Why would you think I would talk about eggplant? Uh, and then I was like, well, I'm a little light on the show for tonight. So, okay, I'm going to write down eggplant. And then I'm going to think, what can I possibly say about eggplant? And then I'm like, well, I can, I can fill half an hour on anything. So here's what I remember about eggplant. Uh, I'm not a big fan of eggplant, uh, as you know. And I, I think that's for two reasons. First of all, eggplant is gross and disgusting. Uh, there's, there's no good way to prepare eggplant. They try to hide it in things. They're like... We, we took delicious cheese and, and delicious tomato sauce and eggplant, and we made a delicious casserole for you. And I'm like, what was that third thing? And they were like, the extra cheese. And I'm like, no, the stuff that's, it's like tofu, but worse. Aww. And they're like, oh, the eggplant. And I'm like, yes. And I'm like, oh, curses, we admitted it. Um. I'm not a big fan of eggplant. Uh, I try to never eat it. Um, and, and the first reason, as I mentioned, is it's gross and disgusting in every possible way. Uh, the second is, I think when I was four, I was terrified by a newspaper comic that involved eggplants. Uh, which is... I had a grandmother that didn't believe in buying things. Um, so at some point in her life, she bought like a Sunday paper... And then she just kept it around to read, like over and over. Like, oh, we're reading the paper again. And I was four. I didn't know this was a dumb idea. Uh, but it was. she had one set of Sunday funnies. And I read that Sunday funnies every time I went to visit her for years. It's always the same one. And later in life, I was like, what, the, every day? They print these every day? Really? Um, but But front and center on this Sunday comic was... I don't know why, but when I was young, they had colored newspaper comics about vegetables or something, because there was a comic that talked about eggplants, and it had a big picture of an eggplant, and it's like the eggplant was invented in China or something. I don't remember what it said, but it, it, it was like a history of the eggplants in the Sunday comics, which is why kids don't read anymore. Because <laughs> uh, really, if you want to... I used to say, if you want you know, kids to read the Sunday comics, they should be exciting and have, like, nights and stuff. And then I discovered they have, like, Sunday comics with, like, nights and stuff, and they're boring as all get out. <laughs> uh, so I think if you want kids to read the newspaper, you need to have Sunday comics with uh, tiny furry animals that are satirical and mock everything. I think, that, I think that's really your only hope these days. Uh, but anyway, eggplants. There was this comic about eggplants, and every time I read it and I thought... Why in the world would I eat that big, blue, gross, disgusting thing? Even though this comic is trying to talk me into it. Um, eggplant. Eggplant is, of course, uh, a subset of vegetable. Uh, I'm not a big fan of vegetables uh, in most ways. Uh, for example, uh, what other vegetables don't I like? Squash. All of them. Uh, I forced myself to eat some of them. I used to say, I like corn. And then the Lord kept saying, corn's not a vegetable. And I'm like, I think it is. It comes from a farm. <laughs> and she's like, that's not what vegetables are. And I'm like, yes, farms make vegetables and farms make meat. Those are the two food groups, really. There's meat and vegetables. And she's like, no, that's not. Go read Wikipedia. <laughs> And they're like, vegetables are the non-fruit-bearing part. Whatever, right? Vegetables come from farms. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of them. I'll eat some. Like, I can force myself at work to eat a salad because I'm fat. And <laughs> if I eat food I don't like, I eat less of it. <laughs> that's, that's, the, that's the theory. It doesn't, it doesn't seem to work, but... Perhaps I will enjoy it less as I eat more of it. And so someday, someday it might work. Um, uh, Maureen mentioned other vegetables I don't like include squash. 
Uh, we actually had a discussion at home about this. They were trying to convince me there's a difference between squash and gourds. They're like, you don't like squash, but you do like gourds. And I'm like, I don't. I think those are the same thing. And they're like, no, squash are blah, 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 blah. And gourds are blah, 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 Right? There's no difference, right? Gourds, I think gourds are just dried out squash, for all I can think of. Because gourds you can hit with a stick, and they might make noise. Whereas if you hit squash with a stick, it just makes a soft thudding sound, like a thud, thud. Uh, and if you stay in the front of your house with a baseball bat and you toss a squash up and you give it a good whack, the squash will make a thud sound as it as it rockets off. Whereas the gourd, the gourd will make a nice salad sound as it rockets off. Squash versus gourds. I don't even know why we grow gourds. I mean, you can't eat them. They're dry. I think they're only decorative, which is crazy. It's like, we're going to spend all this money to grow something to look at. I'm like, why Why would you do that? Why not just spend all that money to make an iPod and you could sell it? <laughs> uh, also on my list, make fun of drummers. That's because Rusty was here playing the drums earlier. <laughs> And I said, hey, Rusty, what should I talk about on my show? And he said, you should make fun of drummers. And I was like, okay. And he's like, don't write that down. <laughs> I didn't mean it. And I was like, don't say things to me before the show if you don't want me to talk about them. Because I'm desperate for topics. And so I write down, here's the thing about drummers. Um, drummers think they're musicians. But music involves notes. Drummers just have a stick and they hit things. Drummers are like, they're like club bouncers with a stick. You know, there there's no melody to drummers. They're just thump 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 thump. I, I can hit things vaguely rhythmically. I mean, not as good as a drummer, but still above drummers. There's musicians, and musicians have notes and stuff. My friend Peter's a drummer, and he's like, "Oh yeah, it's really hard." And I'm like, "You're hitting one thing with a stick." He's like, "Well, sometimes you have to hit the cymbal." <laughs> I'm like, okay. He's like, and there are different kinds of drums. And I'm like, but you hit each one, right? And he's like, yes. <laughs> so I'm like, so it's the same skill. You're just hitting different sized things. He's like, well, like bass drums have a timpani or whatever. And I'm like, really? You people are so starved for attention, you have made up different names for sticks. <laughs> like, you're like, I, I, we, this is a drumstick. See, drumstick makes sense because it's a stick that you use to hit a drum, but like a bass drum stick, I guess, is what you should call I Now the drummers are going to write in and hate me. That'll be great. I'll make up a forum for the drummers on the website, and they can, they can hate me. Uh, here's, here's the big news for us this month. Uh, it's November for me, uh, for you, March, possibly April. Again, I'm terribly sorry about the editor. Um, I've had a long talk with him. I've had a long talk with his parents. Um, I have said, why aren't you editing my show more quickly? And he's like, I have all this stuff I also have to do. And I'm like, you should stop doing that stuff. And he's like, but it's important. And I'm like, it's not as important as this show. This show to you is the most important thing. And he's like, no, no, I've, I've got these committees that I have to go to. And I'm... I'm, I'm on my credit union board, and my parents are visiting, for God's sakes. And I'm like, listen, my parents are visiting, and I do the show, okay? Your parents being here shouldn't in any way keep you from, in a timely fashion, getting the show edited and up on the internet so that people can mock it on YouTube, okay? Uh, that's all I got to say about that. Uh, again, I'm sorry. Uh, I have looked at having him arrested. Uh, <laughs> The chief of police has actually blocked my phone because I kept calling him saying, why don't you arrest this guy? And he'd be like, he hasn't committed any crimes. And I'm like, you're the chief of police. Just make up a crime. <laughs> He's like, that's not the way it works. And I'm like, you're doing it wrong. Uh, anyway, the big news uh, was, was, the, was the Halloween party, which none of you came to because, well, A, your invitation was lost in the mail. <laughs> Uh, or B, uh, we didn't invite you. Because uh, I, 
uh, we throw this big Halloween party every year. Uh, it's our one opportunity of the year for, you know, a huge drunken party. Uh, the rest of the year, we just drink in silence at home, <laughs> you know, by ourselves. Uh, but we're not alcoholics. We know that because we can stop anytime we want to. Uh, I think. I mean, I've never tried it. Uh, but I'm pretty sure if, if I were to try it, it, it might work. Uh, and that, I think, is enough. Uh, anyway, huge party. The theme this year, I don't remember the theme. It was something about, we have these meetings where we talk about themes, and I said cartoon villains. And they said, we don't like that theme. And then somehow it involved cartoons and something else. Uh, and we invited like 100 people, and like 40 of them came. We might have invited 200 people, for all I know. But I think like 40 or 50 people came. Most of them came in costume. Uh, we've been doing the, the party for a number of years. And we, we have found the way to ensure that people come in costume is if people don't come in costume, mock them relentlessly for the next year. <laughs> because eventually they will learn if they don't want to be mocked relentlessly for an entire year, they should put a costume on. Uh, one person tries to get around this. He wears a costume which consists of a, Hi, my name is and then some other person's name. <laughs> like, I'm in costume. And we're like, yes, yes you are, John. <laughs> and then for the entire next year, we mock him relentlessly behind his back. We say horrible, horrible things about him. But he never hears them because we don't say them in front of him. But everyone mocks this person for not wearing a proper costume to the Halloween party. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> anyway, uh, the, the costumes work well. Uh, this year I went as Professor Utonium. Uh, he created the Powerpuff Girls. So I made three little Powerpuff Girls out of felt, and I hung them behind my head on fishing string. And all night long I had to explain to people, I'm Professor Utonium. I invented the Powerpuff Girls. So it's pretty much costume fail on my part because <laughs> when you have a co it's not it wasn't a great costume, but you shouldn't have to explain your costume to people like Professor Utonium and they're like you're a professor and I'm like no I'm I have three little felt things hanging behind <laughs> me. Why didn't you ask about those? Like people would go, "What's up with a lab coat?" And I'm like, "Really? I got <laughs> I have a stick down my entire back to support three felt girls hanging two feet above my head. Doesn't occur you ask about them. You're just like, lab coat? You're a professor? <laughs> Actually, as the evening goes on, since I'm drinking, I cared less and less. <laughs> I think midway through the evening, I recall telling someone I was Professor Neutronium. <laughs> which I think is a villain in a DC comic book. And then for the rest of the night, I decided to be Professor Newtonium to see if anyone noticed. <laughs> no one noticed. No, no. So apparently there were no Powerpuff fans <laughs> at the party, or I met them really early. <laughs> but, I, but I wouldn't have had to explain who I was to them. So no power... I, I guess, in retrospect, going as an obscure animated kids TV show from eight or ten years ago, not the best idea. Uh, if you're going to come to my party, uh, I recommend someone, people who drink heavily are going to recognize. <laughs> would be your best bet. Uh, so that would be that Dos Equis guy or anyone from a Bud Light commercial or <laughs> Captain Morgan. Uh, I really, <laughs> your drinking heroes. Uh, uh, I will point out one thing about our party. There is no dancing at our party. <laughs> do not come to our party intending to dance. We do not dance at our parties. And it's not like at a Footloose there's no dancing allowed here sense. Most of us, and by that I mean me, are terrible at dancing and we just don't want to see it. We don't want to see other people trying to do it. Uh, because if I have a party and people dance at the party, eventually someone's going to go, Hey, Keith, come out on the dance floor and dance. And then, depending on how drunk I am, I might actually try <laughs> to go out on the dance floor and dance. And that, 
that would be a disaster. Uh, not the crossing the streams level disaster, but it would be bad. It would pretty much put a nail in any potential future political coffin I might have. By coffin, I mean future. Like, really, I mean, this, you know, sure, you can sexually harass three of your employees and get off on it, but if there's a, a video released of you dancing poorly, somewhat drunkenly at a party, you are never going to be elected to any office, I think, is, is just my observation. You've, you've never seen any successful politician just really stink at dancing. Uh, that's why I don't dance. All right, that's not why. I don't dance because I can't dance. But I, I make up excuses, I, I guess, is my answer. Um, oh, here's something fun. Uh, we, we, every year we make beverages. Uh, I've explained in the past about our occasional disastrous beverage-making <laughs> activities. Uh, I just want to assure you all at home, the beverage-making went fine. Uh, no one died from drinking the beverages. Uh, people said, this doesn't taste like there's a lot of alcohol in it. And I said, well, there's a fair amount in there. And then later they came back and said, yes, there was. <laughs> uh, uh, but since it was a vaguely mad science-y party, uh, I also... All right, it wasn't a vaguely mad science-y party. I added that part in my head because I was a scientist <laughs> at the party. Uh, but as a scientist and as the beverage dispenser, I went out and bought like 30 bucks worth of dry ice. And every time someone wanted a delightful beverage, a delightful adult beverage, I would get the cup and I would drop a chunk of dry ice in it and then I would fill it up with delightful adult beverages or water, or fruit juice, if that's what they wanted. And then it would just steam. It would, it would steam. like it would be, There'd be all kinds of crap coming off the top of it. So much so that we had to get straws. So that everyone could have a straw in their beverage and drink. Because you, if you got a cup full of dry ice and liquid, and you put it up near your mouth, there's some risk that if you breathe in, you will die. <laughs> well, you won't die, but you might fall over, because there's no air in you. Because it's all full of carbon dioxide. Uh, so straws. If you're a budding alcoholic and you want to drink really cool adult <laughs> beverages with dry ice in them, just buy some straws. That's all I'm saying, kids. <laughs> See? People say there's no good advice on Keith Explains, but there is. <sighs> I guess I got a minute and a half to talk about this whole Occupy Wall Street thing. It'll be over by the time you see this TV show. Um, but there are people occupying places in this country because they aren't happy. Uh, and it's not clear why they're not happy because they're not allowed to have megaphones. <laughs> And so if you watch them, one guy has to yell, and then 20 guys have to listen to him, and then yell the same thing, and by the time you get to the back of the, to the, back of the crowd, they're upset about the King Kardashian divorce thing. Um, now, I do, I do mostly sympathize with the, the occupied people. I mean, as, as, a, as a protest, me, it's a great idea. Because you pick the word occupy, and you put the name of someone's post on trouble having to drive to New York if they want to protest something.